So we're here at Corn and Woodhouse again. It was here two weeks ago. Simon's here, AJ's here. And you were talking about how the nine Fs were basically built as steam was being withdrawn from service. Yeah, the modernization plan of the mid 1950s for British mm -hmm. Railways. Bit of a weird thing in that they were already progressing with building standardized designs of steam locos. Basically, mm -hmm. instead of maintaining and operating all these different kinds of classes from all across the network, you know, the Great Western, Southern, LNER, LMS, even free grouping stuff, just build your own class of standardized locos, taking the best bits from all of them and building them. Except then in the mid 50s, they decided they didn't want steam anymore. Mm -hmm. So while the 9Fs, which are probably the pinnacle of steam loco building in the UK, in British Railways history, awesome, awesomely powerful steam locos could run, were built for freight, but could run 90 mile an hour all day on passenger services if they needed to. As they were still coming off the production line, steam was starting to be scrapped. Right. And in the end, some of them only had a service life of eight years. So we had similar things happen in the USA. Okay. So... <laughs> Except it started earlier. Right, okay. Steam locomotives were built. The last steam locomotive to come off of a commercial production line was in about 1949. Right. Um, Chesapeake and Ohio number 1309 yep. came off the production line, I believe, in the late 1940s um, out of the Baldwin Locomotive Works. That locomotive has been restored to operation in Cumberland, Maryland. And if all goes well, I'll be seeing it later this year. Excellent. Um, and locomotives continued to be built by the Norfolk and Western into the 1950s. So by the mid 1950s, steam was pretty much dead everywhere. Right. The Except Norfolk they were still building steam locos. They yeah. were still building steam locos. The T1s on the Pennsylvania Railroad famously had a service life of about seven years, if that. Most of what. So. When the first T1... Which I bet is nowhere near what they were built for. Right. Yeah. I bet they when, could go for 20, 30 years. The, when the first T1 entered service, it was the same day as the Pennsylvania Railroad took delivery of their first E7 diesel. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it wasn't just Britain that didn't quite know what to do with the right. whole steam diesel transition. Yeah. <laughs> so many of the locomotives that are currently mainline worthy and in preservation today... Ran for less than 10 years in operation in the U.S. Yep. 611 is right. one of them. It was built in 1950, wrecked in 1956, was out of service for until 1958, was brought back into service and retired in 1959. <laughs> I always wonder what the point Not is. Not a lot of ice pack. Yeah, and the it 9Fs were the exact same. Like, the last ones ran up, came off the production line in 1960... All steam on British Railways was gone by 68. Yes. So the nine Fs that are preserved, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, I believe there's about eight or nine that are preserved, mm -hmm. which is a good number for sort of massive Including logo. the last one ever built. The last steam loco ever built by British Railways. That's Evening Star. Right. That's currently gathering dust on display in the National Railway Museum. Yes. Uh, and it was the only one that was painted in Brunswick green right out the gate, which is normally right. a passenger loco color. Freight yeah. locos were colored black. Uh, City of Leicester is in green and is named. Uh, that's because they were that was done in preservation. Mm -hmm. They decided why not. And why did that have a few different names? It has, yeah, and it's named City of Leicester right now because it's based in Leicester, basically. Right, yeah. And um, yeah, pretty much all the nine Fs that have run in preservation have run in preservation longer than they did in operational service. Right, and that's that's the case for so many locomotives. It in really the US is, isn't it? And yeah. so yeah. many steam locomotives in preservation in general. Yep. And one of the reasons I think why a lot of steam locomotives that are able to run in preservation are those late ones is because they didn't have that many miles on them. Yep. And their boilers were still in decent condition when they were when they were parked. Absolutely, yeah. And of course for a lot of them it was very random that they got preserved at least in the US. Yep. 611 was at the end of the line of locomotives to be in the easiest to get to to be pulled out for the farewell excursions on the N&W. Yep. 4449 was at the end of a line of locomotives to be given to Portland to be put on display. 765 wasn't supposed to be preserved. It was supposed to be 767 yep. sent to Fort Wayne. 
but because 767 was in such bad shape, they scrapped 767, put the number yep. plates from 767 on 765, and sent that to Fort Wayne. Yep. And those are probably three of the most famous steam locomotives operating in the US. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually got a similar story for you. It's not a steam loco, though. It is a diesel, but it was the one of the Western region diesel hydraulics, which was scrapped in the late 70s, well, early to mid 70s, some of them, because they were non-standard even again yeah. another criminal waste same, of same with of... the uh, deltics too yes yeah yeah yeah. i think they lasted until the early 80s yeah 82? yes 1982, but like I you think. had all these different like western region had the unique diesel hydraulics the Actually, 55s yeah the 55s were a unique design for the east coast main line yep and all of these unique design diesel locomotives over here pretty much disappeared not long after they were built yep. in favor of more standard designs like the 37, 47, and in the case of the 55s, the HSTs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and what you say about what certain, what locos get preserved and sometimes be random, there's a great example with one of the two diesel hydraulic warships that is preserved. I can't remember which one it is, whether it's Onslaught or Greyhound, but one of them only came about because the whoever was going to go and buy it was actually going to go and buy a smaller class 22 known as a baby warship very small little thing yeah. uh, and then unfortunately the day he came to pick it up uh, they went to look around the yard and discovered that someone had sent it for scrap so British Rail very embarrassed decided uh, how about you take one of these others over here what a full-size warship yes as a sort of make good yeah. <laughs> how about you have a full-size one instead right which one's in the best nick and it was I want to say it was Greyhound uh, that's the one that got taken. That's right. the only reason it got preserved. It shouldn't mm -hmm. have been preserved, but just a wild coincidence like that, and the fact that it was relatively in good nick, mm -hmm. saved it. So there you go. Well, we're gonna wait here for the uh, bullied Pacific to come back and catch you later.